Whoa, I'm uh, <clears throat> getting uh, kicked out of the Impalers group here, and I thought I'd do a video response at this time and cover a few topics, having a little discussion about abiogenesis. There's a common misconception that, you know, you can somehow separate uh, evolution and abiogenesis. And, you know, from an atheist perspective, that's absolute nonsense because, you know, there are no plausible explanations for how complex life got here. Uh, except through <clears throat> either God uh, creating these things distinctly from uh, an organized, intelligent design approach, or <clears throat> these things randomly somehow coming together from available materials, because everybody agrees that we had a hot Earth formation, and at some point, you know, every part of the universe was disorganized to the degree of not having, you know, there weren't just life forms floating around in space, you know, at some point. we had <laughs> looking for a planet to spawn on. Uh, these things had to originate somewhere. So, uh, as per the, the Dawkins Dodge, the Dawkins Dodge, <laughs> look at him go, boy, he's off and flying and has everybody believing that he's still a credible person because he says what? He says aliens did it. He says you know, but then where did the aliens come from? I'm sorry. At some point you have to have a theory, at least some wild theory, about, you know, how things got there. And so far the only wild theory that we have is there was a process called abiogenesis, which uh, generated life from proimoidal soup. Uh, and uh, uh, have you ever heard of that at a restaurant? You know, and they bring it out, and it's got a fly in it, and you're like, God, it's, and they're like, it's moidal soup! You know, no. <laughs> what do you expect? But, um, <clears throat> yeah, the fly just <clears throat> comes right out of there. And Anyway, uh, but, <laughs> you know, you've got uh, <clears throat> a problem here, because uh, there, there are two entirely distinct astronomical odd scenarios compounded one on each other, but wait, it gets worse than that, because, you know, I don't even bother with abiogenesis when I'm talking to people, but at first I want you to understand that the two are tied together. There is no other, even wild theory about how things got here other than aliens did it, but then you have to say, how did the aliens get there, and you're right back in the same scenario. you got to have abiogenesis and evolution again for them. So these processes had to happen somewhere in the universe. If you believe in space travel, that's your problem. Uh, across long distances, I do not. I think it's completely implausible. But uh, anyway, uh, say uh, you have, uh, <clears throat> you know, just abiogenesis. Then what happens after these cells are there? Well, nothing happens. There is no no just complex life <laughs> coming out of the soup. You know, it's like. <laughs> not going to happen. So uh, you need a, even by the wildest theories, you need some kind of progression from the simple to the more complex. Now, uh, so for an, evolu for an atheist, uh, they absolutely believe in both abiogenesis and evolution. I mean, I would say, or they're nuts. I already believe they're nuts completely, but it, or they're really turbo nuts, okay? <laughs> I don't know, you need a new classification for levels of nuttiness here. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so we have these two things distinctly tied together for the atheist. Uh, there are various people who claim to be uh, theists, who claim to believe there's a God, and they, they think that evolution is the process God used. So maybe God did the AO, abiogenesis part, and totally bypass that. He created the cells at a symbol of, you know, they might believe that. Or they might believe that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, abiogenesis happened and then uh, God took it from there. You know, there's people that believe both of those things. Probably, I believe neither of them happened because they're both, well, not I have faith that I know didn't happen, but even looking at it just scientifically, uh, just without my faith, I would still have to say, to be honest here, I've got to look at it and say, this is a scenario so complex, having these hundreds of proteins come together and form a, a replicable uh, molecule. It just, it's so ridiculous if you look at the science of it. It's absolutely just an astoundingly unlikely thing to happen anywhere in the universe, no matter how many, uh, the best case estimates 
still I've heard atheists tell me that they agree that it's probably around 1 in 10 to the 50th odds. Aaron Novick agreed with that uh, before he died. I talked to him, one of the uh, professors that was the head of the Institute of Molecular Biology in Eugene, Oregon. I had a conversation with him before he died a few years and he totally agreed that it was uh, something, you know, in excess of 1 in 10 to the 50th probably. But he said, that's still the way it happened. And I'm like, well, okay, Aaron, if you want to believe that, and you know. But uh, I personally believe that because uh, I have faith in, in a God because of relationship. It's not blind faith. But, you know, through that I understand that he is there and then the testimony of the Bible is so rigorous and it overlaps physical things and they're all true. Every physical thing that is projected there is true, and for somebody to fabricate that, the odds are astronomical. So even from a, a non-Christian's view, they should look at that and seriously consider that there is something else going on besides these uh, wild theories that have been presented. But, you know, then you get to evolution and the unlikelihood of it. Like I said, I don't even mess with abiogenesis because they both have to go hand in hand, and evolution is so easy to disprove because of the critical design of the vital organs of a complex life form like a human. You cannot evolve slowly into that. If you start to slowly evolve one part of that, you wind up with a dead organism! It's dead! It's worse than that, Jim! <laughs> you can't uh, proliferate a life that has a defective heart valve. It simply dies. It's over with. You can't have slow, gradual changes. And every scientist that I've ever talked to knows that mass mutation is a ludicrous theory, so it has to be slow, gradual changes. But slow, gradual changes are impossible because of the critical design and the thousands of interwoven genetic design codes that have to be right to make them work. And you, so you've got a mass mutation. You're changing thousands of things. That's a mass mutation, baby. It's over. It's done. The theory is bogus. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bob Weigel of Sound Doctor in signing off.